Hello, this is Jerry Jenkins. Uh, this is a short video. We're about to start Python. So I'm going to show you a little bit about different ways of running Python. Uh, this isn't in the book, but it's interesting. Uh, we're going to be running Python about three different ways. Uh, so we're going to go over them. And then I'll show you another one that's very popular for scientists these days. Now, once you've installed Python on a PC or a Mac, you can open up a terminal window on a Mac or a PowerShell or the command prompt uh, on a PC and you get into an environment where you can do command lines. Uh, and so the simplest way that uh, usually you'll see people run Python is by a program that when you install Python it also installs called IDLE. I -D -L -E. So I'm just going to type that. Hit enter and you'll see it pops up a window over here and so this gives you an environment you can just type in Python and check out a short uh, code. If you've written a Python file, there's a way of including it uh, to run it. Uh, so uh, when you look on the um, online websites about Python, there are many places that show you how to use idle. And so I can just do some things like assign a variable uh, and assign another variable. And then we'll print the result of those, maybe adding them together. And and one thing I pointed out is there are two versions of Python. I forgot to point that out. There's a 2.7 version and there's a 3 uh, plus version. We're, I think we're running 3.4 right now. And the two versions are different from each other. The 2.7 is an older version. Uh, that is still around and very popular because there's a lot of libraries and software written for it. And then the newer version is 3.4. The whole class will be in 3.4. But when you run Python, sometimes you end up running an older version or a newer version. There's some differences. And one of them that's different is the print command. Um, in the print command in the new version, you always have to put the, uh, the argument to the print command in parentheses. But in the old version, print command is not actually a method that you have to provide parentheses. You can just say print uh, a plus b, and it works perfectly too. So we're just executing some simple statements in Python. This would do the same thing as if you wrote a file and put these statements in. The way Python works is a file is considered a module, and it just executes what it sees in the module. Uh, a lot of times we'll learn you can put at the top of the module uh, what are called import statements that will bring in code from other files uh, which are part of the Python library or files that you've written or that are supplied by our book author. Uh, so idle is one way of running Python. So I'm going to close that. Now the other way of running Python from the command line is just, start, is just to type the word Python. And it's going to behave exactly like idle now, if you type idle or Python on a Mac and you've installed 3.0, uh, you have to do a little different. What I'm typing here will actually bring up the correct version on your PC of version 3. But you'll see it tells us we're in version 2.7. I'm going to exit out of... The way you exit out of the uh, Python or idle, or Python specifically, is you type exit, parentheses, parentheses, or you can do control C. Control C will exit most programs if you're in a command line. And I'm going to show you how to run the other Python. So on a Mac you have to say Python 3 when you want to run version 3. And so we're now in version 3 and we'll see that if we try to do a print, we'll try to print a string that says hello, uh, we'll get an error. So you have to have parentheses around uh, print is actually a function in version 3, so you have to put the parameter with the string in parentheses. Uh, so that's, you can run Python directly from uh, ty ty typing in Python, uh, and I rarely do that. There's, there's, unless I just want to run a couple lines of code or see if Python is installed correctly. Um, and the same with idle. Idle is nice because it's available on every system you've installed Python, so you could learn to use it. Uh, but we're going to be using a IDE called uh, PyCharm, which we had you install. So once you've installed PyCharm, you can create a project, 
and let me close this project. I'll just go through those steps. Uh, and you get the welcome screen and I have some existing projects here. You can create a new project uh, which we did in the intro. So I'm just going to go back to the project we had. So that gives you a little bit of navigation there. And the project just has the name of the project. It shows you exactly where it is on the drive if you're trying to find your files. And then within this file I've created a bank account which has to do one of your assignments. So I'm going to create a blank Python file. So I just right click on uh, the project and say new and uh, say Python file and you give it a name and so we're just going to do some simple stuff so I'll call it simple and make sure it says Python file and it's going to go ahead and create the file and it puts it right here in the editor. Now this is a navigation area to navigate your project and the files and if you put your mouse on between them you'll see this the mouse changes to a double arrow I can adjust things here okay so once you have the file open uh, this is just setting a special variable to the author and special variables that are built into Python which we'll use once in a while uh, start with uh, uh, two underscores so you'll see a lot of things we're going to use I have two underscores when they start uh, so we can go ahead and delete this line and uh, a comment in Python is a pound sign followed by whatever you want to say so it's like a slash slash comment in Java or C++ uh, so a print statement so we can print and give it a string and say hello uh, we can uh, create a variable uh, b and set it to 22 and using an IDE like PyCharm it will do a lot of things for you and one of the things it will do is when you start typing it will anticipate what you're typing and you could just choose something from this list and type it if we make a complex variable ABC is equal to 99 and then we start typing A you'll see it's going to also list the variables and symbols we've created in our own program uh, so like Visual Studio uh, and Eclipse uh, the IDE for PyCharm will help you programming if you get used to it and we'll show you later you can use it to debug your program uh, and so, so we're going to show you those techniques uh, so let's do another print Let's print uh, A times ABC. And now to run it, uh, the easiest way to run it is you right click in the file you're in. Because uh, if you use the run menu at the top, uh, it doesn't always know which file you want to run. So we're just going to say run simple. And when we learn to debug, it's got the debug right here. So we're just going to say run simple. And it's going to open up a window at the bottom when it runs and it tells us the name A is not defined. I've actually made an error. So you can see the error reporting is much like C++ or Java. It gives you where the error is and you just click on this um, link here. It'll take you in the editor to the line the error's on. And it says name A is not defined and that's because I called it B. So I need the, and it, in fact it indicated this little squiggly here. If I put the mouse it says I have an unresolved reference. So I could have noticed that when I was typing. Uh, so we'll change that to B. Right click and say run simple again. And now you can see it, it types out hello and, it, and the multiplying 22 by 99. So that's uh, running in PY, um, in, in PY charm. And this is how you should learn to do your programming is in PY charm. We're going to have you work on projects. Uh, that you can actually upload and use and there's also code you, you can put directly in the book but you should definitely be working with PyCharm to, to work on your code uh, but we're going to show you a couple way, more ways uh, we're going to use Python or one more way we're going to use run Python and that's actually in the book itself okay so this we've switched to a browser and we're actually looking at the, the website the book is on and when you go through the book, it's an interactive book and it has places you can actually write programs. And they, so they might give you a program like this and ask you to modify it. So this is called Active Code. And uh, you should, you're, we're actually going to be grading that you've interacted with every place that you can code in the book. So we're going to actually grade you on interacting on the, all the places you can interact. So this is a special feature uh, that gives you an existing program. 
and you can run it. And it shows you the output down here. Uh, or you could edit it. So you could try changing these numbers uh, and run it again. And uh, I did something wrong there. I left, oh, I deleted the square bracket. So it gives me a syntax error. Now this version of Python that we're running on the website is actually running in your browser for those techies that might be interested in this. They actually have a version of the Python language that can completely runs on top of JavaScript, which is built in your browser. And this is how the book actually provides Python to you. So it doesn't have to go out to a server to run Python. Uh, you can also just do your own program here. So I'm going to delete all this. And uh, I'll say A is equal to 99, and B is equal to 22. And we'll print uh, A times B. And we'll run that. And you'll see it prints an answer here. So this is another way you're going to be running Python. Now, another way that people run Python, uh, which is becoming very big in science, is called an IPython notebook. So I'm switched back to uh, the command line or the terminal on a Mac. And I'm going to type uh, IPython uh, notebook. Now what IPython notebook is and why scientists are so uh, excited about using it is uh, right now if you're working on a scientific project you have to do uh, 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 you have to write research papers you have to do statistics and mathematical modeling uh, you have to do uh, lots of graphics that go into your paper so when you when you're working in all this you have to use a lot of different tools like Excel a database maybe a scientific statistics package uh, you might have to use a publishing system to to write your text and then uh, then pull it all together so you can get the graphs and insert them into your text. It's very complicated. So IPython Notebook allows you to do all of that in one document. And not only does it do that, but it creates, it can automatically create a web page for you that documents everything. It has your code and your scientific analysis written in Python. It has a place where you can write in your own uh, part of your reports uh, for scientific journals and so on. And uh, and then you can publish it to the web and share it with other scientists very easily. Uh, so this is really taking off. So if you install, I have a. If you go to the common resources, there's a file that tells you how to install IPython Notebook. And you can play with it. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter here. And what IPython Notebook runs in is actually runs in your browser. Uh, oops. Oh, I'm inside the interpreter. So let's do that again. So I was inside Python. It won't run from there. You have to run it from the command line. And what it's telling you is it's starting up a server. It automatically starts your browser and brings up IPython Notebook. And it gives you basically your directory structure from your home directory. And it's useful if you already have an, a, 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 a folder to put things. So you can keep them separate. I made one. Let's see. This called IPython work. So I double click here and it opens that up. And then I've already created a notebook, but you can create a new notebook. And this is a little sample notebook. And what the notebooks consist of of cells, and the cells you can put in code, or you can put in uh, text. And the text is in a is, can be formatted in a thing called markup, which you can learn about. And then you can also put in cells that are headings, and this one's a heading. Uh, so you can set the cell type up here. And uh, so if you write some code in here and I hit run, it runs in it and displays the output right under the cell. So what scientists do is they can design Python and it actually documents uh, when they run it right below the cell, whatever it may make a chart or it may do some statistics or it may pull in some data files. So they can use the power of Python to control all that. And then they can write their documentation and their text for some report they're working on. And it all ends up on one simple web page. Uh, so this is another thing that uh, you can use to uh, run Python. Uh, so that's it on this lecture. We just wanted to show you all the ways we're running, running Python. So the ones we're going to be using is PyCharm. We're going to be using the interactive Python in the book. And that's the primary two ways we're going to be using it.